Pokemon Nuzlocke is the most famous and difficult challenge. Some would even call it the Dark Souls Pokemon, I'm sorry. You know the rules, more than likely, but I'll put them up on screen in case you need a refresher. However, I consider myself pretty good at what most people know as Video James. So, I decided to randomize it. So if I go missing, please check your trash. Nintendo might stuff my broken body. So without further ado, kings, queens, and non-binary birthday, we meet again. And today I decided to throw my hat in the ring of Nuzlocke. The game started with Professor Oak raising the dead, and I entered my name. Then it was off to a race, and then I immediately proved my intelligence by going the wrong way. And if you're wondering if this is the extent of my stupidity, to quote Virgil from Devil May Comedy, don't worry Dante, when this is all over, it'll be much worse. Anyway, finally back to the right place, it was time to pick my starter. The choices were Grovile, Zangoose, and me. I took the hairless cat, and I never looked back. Welcome to the team, Bingus. It was then time to fight my right, who took the Zangoose. After getting a few good hits in, the Zangoose decided to stop trying to kill me with its mind, and decided to kill me with two crit scratches in a row. Well, it's a good thing that the Nuzlocke doesn't officially start until I get Pokeballs. Oh, come on, give me a break, it's my first try. On Route 1, I ran into Suicune, which I took as a good sign, because we are about 5 minutes in, and I have seen two of my top 5 favorite mythical Pokemon. So surely nothing bad will happen, right? After picking up the whatever from the market and running into the guy who hadn't had his 9am Dr. Pepper, I headed back to the lab and the Nuzlocke officially started. After catching a Makihita on Route 1 and naming it Daryl, on Route 2 I ran into an Abra. And take a guess what happened. That's right, I accidentally killed it. On Route 22 I caught Chuckle the Shuckle. I then got lost again until I finally made my way into Viridian Forest. It was time for the first battle, and it wasn't that interesting, so I just cut it out. The second battle was way more interesting, however. After getting poisoned by a Wurmple, I used Antidote, only to get poisoned again by Poison Point. After the battle, I had a decision to make. I could return to the Pokemon Center, or I could use a couple of potions and have one more battle and heal at the next city. I considered my options carefully. I decided to continue to the next town. All I had to do was beat one trainer with one Pokemon. And it was a Lunatone that spammed Harden while Poison chipped away at Venus' health, which forced me to switch to Daryl. She was instantly killed by a confusion. I then sent out Chuckle and him the Lunatone traded tackles for minimal damage for three whole minutes until the Lunatone decided it wanted blood and used confusion. But no, we can't be done with this battle yet because Chuckle had a berry that fully healed him, but only for him to be hit by two more confusions and then eventually die. And the Lunatone hung on with one health. Mingus came out and finally killed him, but was still poisoned and I was out of potions. And Bingus only had 12 health. Oh no. I quickly but carefully made my way to the next town, knowing that any wasted step was the difference between life and death. When I made it to the Pokemon Center with Bingus holding on, I headed to the counter, and then... So there I was, like Sisyphus at the bottom of the hill, put here by my own stupidity, ego, or potion management. I had a couple of choices. I could sit here at the bottom of the hill and be pissed at that rock, or I could try again and inevitably be bowled over by the giant rock by having critical thinking skills. I decided to give it one more try because I don't have any other video ideas after this. Let's just skip to the starters. They were Spinda, Minin, and Raichu. I took the fat rat, I never looked back. Named it Pikachu, and then it was time for the rival battle. And, oh, that's, that's broken. Surprise, surprise. I won the battle. You know the deal, get whatever 9am Dr. Pepper Pokedex. I bought some more Pokeballs and potions, then forgot to catch something on Route 2, and forgot to catch something in the forest. Who cares, it's time for the first battle. And this is the time to point out that you normally get Thunderbolt at level 22. 26 if you exclude legendaries, all except for the fat rat before you, who learns it at level 1. Which is a very fancy way of saying, I won the battle. Then it was time for Brock, who opened Probat, followed by a Ludicone. I got the rock badge. On Route 3, I reminded all the trainers that I am the main character, and even Sky Deities can't stop my plot armor. After clearing the rest of the trainers, I got my Route 3 encounter, the Dawn Fan, that I named Mustard. Bought the magic card from the guy, and even though it was an Oddish, her name is Forever Magic Card. Then things started to really look up when I found him a champ in Mount Moon, which is easily in my top 5 favorite Pokemon, because forearms are cool. Welcome to the team, Odd Champ. Then promptly had a Registeel explode, but she's fine. The girl lost. 
Arriving at Cerulean City, I thought it would be a good idea to train up a little bit, and I lost Magikarp to a Taurus using Rage. Now, I would like to say that I felt sad, but I didn't. How do you get attached to something in five minutes? This isn't a feel-good, found family movie. This is war! One training session and empty obituary later, it was time for a rival battle. And surprise, surprise, I won. So after clearing Nugget Bridge, I found a horsey on Route 25, which I named Caesar because I have been doing what every man does to treat his mental illness. A cocktail blend of therapy and learning about ancient Rome. After saving Bill from his contraption, it was time for the second gym, where everyone inside became a third world country with oil to my American military. After getting the waterbed, I turned this innocent bystander into an innocent dystander, got lost again, and then encountered a Cleffa, which a Clefable would be a nice tanky addition to the team, and oops. I encountered a Skeptile on Route 6, which would have been a good addition to the team. I then hopped aboard the SS Ann and then racked up a kill count that hasn't been seen since the Titanic. Then it was time for a rival battle that I kind of forgot about, but who needs preparation when you're over level? On Route 11, I caught an Azumarill, I don't know how to really pronounce that, that I named Caligula because the water type. He also couldn't learn cut, along with all my other Pokemon. So began the hardest challenge thus far, finding a Pokemon that could learn cut. I went to Diglett Cave and ran into a Regirock. Now, I had a choice. I could run away and have guaranteed safety, or I could get a little silly and risk losing mustard in a freak Regirock related accident. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to put on this red nose and honk it like the clown I am. Mustard became the second victim of my stupidity, and just to rub it in, it was a crit. But war doesn't stop at the first death. It ends with the last, so I forged forward. I ran out of Diglett Cave, avoiding encounters like Margaret Thatcher avoided parked cars. I caught a Hariyama, which also couldn't learn cut, so I released it back in the wild. But it's fine, I caught a Blossom, and it could learn cut. This took 20 minutes. They say war is hell, and I let Surge's Pokemon experience both. After ensuring that Surge has flashbacks tonight, I then headed to the museum thing, whatever it is in Peter City, and picked up the Amber. I encountered a Diglett on Route 9 and chose not to catch it. On Route 10, I caught an Absol and named her Scipio, then taught her Cut, so I have six actual party members, and also Aerialites because I needed a flying type move. Inside Rock Tunnel, I ran into an Arcanine as my encounter, and it used Roar. Great! After going to Lavender Town, I ran into this guy, and now I have a new Twitter bio. After entering Celadon, I got the tea from the sweet old lady and got the Eevee that was a shift tree and named her Brutus. I got the coin case and gambled trying to get the prize counter Pokemon and walked away with a net loss of three coins. I then did what every Las Vegas resident should do after getting a gambling addiction. Fight the mafia. And I'm really running out of ways to say I enter a building, turn it into a crime scene, and then leave. But I did exactly that to the Rocket Hat out. I then got to Giovanni, whose team was probably the weakest team I've seen thus far. I then did a little, little more gambling, you know, as a treat. I then used the power of gambling to buy Abra, which is a Lapras, which I named Hadrian. They never saw battle. I also bought the Clefairy, which is a Kabuto, which I named Hannibal, who also never saw battle, which is to say I wasted my time gambling. So naturally I went back to gambling. I'm not someone who quits before they hit it big. I ended up just buying coins because I didn't want to gamble. Remember, the house always wins, and cheating in casinos is always morally correct. I bought the pincer that was a Cinequil, named him Nero, and immediately evolved him into a Quilapa. I then went into Pokemon Tower, and the rival battle was a cakewalk. I then encountered for Alligator, named it Steve, and he spent the rest of his day in the box. I saved Mount Fuji. At this point, I was pretty bored of sweeping everything. So much so that I threw Nero at a water type just to feel something. I then woke up with Snorlax on Route 10, which was a Marowak, and I named Dante. Snorlax on Route 18 was a Victory Bell, which I named Virgil. I then went shopping and bought Hyper Beam and gave it to Scipio, then I realized she was a physical attacker, so that was a waste of time. While training up on Route 17, I almost lost Caesar to a very high roll Fire Punch, but he's fine. He evolved after this. Inside the Safari Zone, I found a Crobat that I named Mike, and immediately taught her Fly because walking sucks. After avoiding the Genshin Impact player outside of the Grass Gym, I went inside and shredded every living thing like a 1920s factory machine shreds underpaid workers. I then went to Fuchsia City Gym to see what level they were, and the only thing that would have made this monkey scarier is we gave it a gun. And let's check that off the list. I then went to go grind up levels, and this Graveler exploding is the most interesting thing that happened. I then caught a Blaziken on Route 12 that I named Ace because cool Pokemon need cooler names, and immediately added him to the team because cool Pokemon need to be on the team. 
I then went to Route 15, ran to a trainer with the Oxus, got served. I then returned to the game corner and I was on a hot streak, but not hot enough to afford flamethrower. <laughs> went back to grinding and everyone became the deer in the middle of the road to my poor F1 movie. On Route 19, I encountered a Natu. Oops. I went ahead and fought the 5th gym. You know how this went. Then my lack of basic knowledge finally reared its ugly head. So I lost an ace to a nature power. And honestly, I thought it always just became swift, but no. And just to rub it in, it was a crit, because of course it was. However, I would still count that as a W. W standing for WOLF. So I brought out Nero out of the box and immediately evolved him. My Route 20 encounter was a Soul Rock. Say hello to Rock, everybody. Now say goodbye, because it's the last time you'll ever see Rock. After fighting everyone at the dojo, I had the option between a Rhyhorn and a Celebi. I picked the Celebi and named him Craig, and then never pulled him out of the box once. After getting a Pokemon that I probably should have added to the team, I then headed to Silphco. The rival battle was a joke as usual, and the scientist handed me a weird fish. I then got to Giovanni and... I went to fight Sabrina, and she had two Reggie. But I have a mutant reptile that hits like a drunk stepfather. I decided to go ahead and get the three free encounters that are just waiting for me. Starting with the power plant, where I found a duplicate Igglybuff, so I wasn't expecting very much for the second encounter. I used my Master Ball on it, and I named it Gordon. Then something interesting happened. After finding two Groudons, I just kind of laughed it off and considered it a fluke in RNG until this happened. Jesus Christ, how has this power plant not crumbled to the ground by now? I approached Zapdos expecting something good for no particular reason, but it seems that my luck had run out. I then decided to teach some moves giving Nero strength, and I had the nefarious idea to teach Raichu Rain Dance to guarantee Thunder hits when I found Thunder. So that was my temporary quest, find Thunder. I decided to bite the bullet and just buy coins so I could finally get Flamethrower and realized that Thunderbolt is sold at the prize counter, not Thunder. I then went to teach Nero Flamethrower and saw that PogChamp could learn it. I mean, I didn't do it, but I considered it. I then went to Seafoam Islands and got another free encounter, which was a waste of time. I found out the Dome Fossil was a Psyduck and never used it. And off to Cinnabar Island where I found a Chansey, which is a great find. Chansey is pretty much a World War I tank, given Mortal Flesh. It would be a good addition to the team. Great. Whatever. I didn't really want it that much. I'd have to spend all that time getting it up to level and teaching it good moves and all that stuff, and it wouldn't really be worth my Inside the gym, Blaine said the funny and then didn't send out a single fire type. I then headed to one island, and I told my brother, you can name the one that I found there. But we are now stuck with Kolosalov the Slugma. Now I have a question for you. Do you want to see me bring internet access to Arkansas? No, of course not. They're better off without it, so I'm skipping everything that happened at one, two, and three island. After looking up where Thunder was, I was headed back to the power plant, where something very unexpected happened. I encountered my first ever shiny, which might seem lucky. Let me explain why my luck is either feast or famine. Yes, it's a shiny, and that's lucky. But for starters, I can't trade this to any other games. And secondly, it is a psychic type, which is my least favorite type, because I think they're lame, bad, and they counter my favorite type, so therefore they are broken. I mean, I still caught it. I'm pissed off. I'm not dumb. I then taught Pikachu Thunder and Nero Fire Blast. It was then time to take on the 8th gym, and we tore through it like Mitch McConnell tears through poor people. Burn in hell, accursed fish dog. It was then time for one more rival battle, which was the same as every other time. Yeah. I taught Nero Earthquake. I went back to Two Island to get the Treasure Beach encounter, which was a Metagross, which I didn't catch, but I wasn't too upset because I had a full strong team, and this definitely isn't an important literary device to plant the idea that something terrible will happen on later. I then went to see Moltres and my expectations were on the ground, and I was still disappointed. My team was looking pretty good nonetheless, but while grinding on Victory Road, everything came to a screeching halt. I lost Pikachu to an explosion, and it was a crit, because when it rains bad luck, it pours bad luck. That hurted a lot. But extreme stupidity doesn't stop time, so I just needed a replacement. So I pulled out Ragnar, Shiny Curlia, and he died to a Grovile that had Pursuit. I needed something tankier, something legendary. 
Gordon. Because a wise man once said, the right legendary in the wrong place can make all the difference. Taught him Solar Beam, because he had drought, and boy howdy was he in the wrong place because he died to a crit hit leaf blade. Come on! Syrup the Nidoran that I caught in Berry Forest, which quickly evolved into a Nido Queen. I was going to train up more because I was under leveled, but I didn't. Because I didn't think I could handle any more of my Pokemon being sent to God. So I took a deep breath and went into the Elite Four with an under leveled but good team. I was pretty confident after quickly killing Lorelei's Swampert. Then my confidence was shattered. I lost Scipio, but winning was all that mattered now. I then killed an Eevee with no trouble, and Gloom with less trouble, and the star me only used for cover and swift, and the only thing it killed was 5 minutes of my time. Bruno opened with a C dot, and it was nothing more than a speed bump as Nero and Pogchamp swept through his entire team. After the fight, I taught Mike Giga Drain and Pogchamp double team. Agatha started with Meowth and threw out the most random assortment of Pokemon I saw the entire game. Lance sent out an Umbreon and then proceeded to throw out every type that was weak to fighting, and even a crit hit Iron Tail couldn't stop the great train girl boss that was Pogchamp. Then all that was left was the champion. After using some items, I knew this battle was the final roadblock in this adventure. Whether it ended in glorious victory or crushing defeat. So I geared up, felt the worst thing that he could throw at me was a psychic type, and what he had in store was much, much worse. I quickly swapped out Pogchamp for Nero, who was able to tank his own confusion damage and a psychic, and land a crit hit flamethrower, all before finally being brought down by a psychic. I then threw out Mike to try to flinch with Bite, and even though she got close, she was not able to survive long enough to pull it off. However, all the damage that I had just done was put off, as the Hypno was given a full restore, and even a Surf and a Crit Hit Blizzard couldn't finish the job. Caesar survived a Psychic on 3 health, which gave him one more chance to land a Blizzard, which did not kill this absolute menace of a Pokemon. It then laid down a Future Sight, which gave me the chance to heal Caesar, but the next Psychic killed him in one hit. I then sent out Syrup for the first time, who proved her worth by tanking the Future Sight, and then was killed by Psychic. And that is when the futility of the situation really set in. It was fitting, really, to sweep my rival's team every time, only to lose it when it mattered most. It felt bad to get so close to the finish line and fall right in the home stretch. So with great reluctance, I sent out Pogchamp for the last time, thinking the road to victory was impossible. But Pogchamp achieved the impossible. After killing the Hypno, Blue sent out a Dragonite. So Pogchamp got in a quick low kick and it used agility and went first the next turn, only to waste the golden opportunity to turn me into dust and use safeguard instead, only to die to a crit low kick. The Dragonite was followed by a Kingdra that missed its first Hydro Pump, and even with the second one hitting, it couldn't save itself from death. He then sent out his starter, which used Charge, which gave me a free heal, only to follow it up with another Charge and was discharged after being relieved of its mortal shell. Next was a shelter that spammed Protect, which gave me the opportunity to lay down some double damage. And despite it only using Leer, Blue gave it two full restores. Why? He was then down to his last Pokemon, and he saved the worst for last. Not a Ghost type, not another Psychic type, but one stupid Crustacean. Now, I know what you were thinking. Really? A Krabby is what you're afraid of? Well, you see, Krabby can learn Deity. One of the four one-hit KO moves, and it learns it at level 41. And this one was level 61. After it used Crab Hammer, and I missed my cross chop, my worst fears were realized when it used Guillotine, but luckily missed. After missing another cross chop, it landed two protects in a row, and I was sweating bullets. I was out of cross chop, and a low kick wasn't doing enough, and I was in constant fear of this stupid crab turning Pogchamp into a 1700s French queen. I was so nervous I wasted my max ether on low kick. 
used an elixir, and we both proceeded to miss attack after attack, including a guillotine. Until... And it was over. The Kanto region had started that day with one champ, and it left with two. It wouldn't have been possible without all the lost souls along the way, but PogChamp pulled through on the end. I ran back to Pallet Town, happy with the feeling that I won by the skin of my teeth, and hoping that all psychic types go to hell, leaving me with a very respectable 50-50 Nuzlocke record, one that I would love to improve. So this is a quick editor's note. This video was supposed to be done in November. That, that clearly didn't happen. So to make a really long story short, I got really sick in October and November, and it screwed up my throat. I recovered in early December. The holidays came around, got back to the video that I was going to make. In January, I hated it, so I scrapped, scrapped it. To be honest, I kind of hate the first video I made because it's bad, and the jokes are that good not a high quality but I'm very much for the pres pre I'm very much for the preservation of history if that's what you want to call it but from here on out I'm gonna be more consistent uh, and, and for sticking around you get a sneak peek into the next one it's it's age of mythology so uh, until we meet again.